undeniable. Ronnie Smith. Undeniable. I was sitting with a friend at his recording studio when he used that word in a way that really caught my attention and fired my imagination for a future Toastmasters talk. <laughs> we were recording a piece of music and we needed a piano player. I didn't realise that Neil was a piano player, we might have asked him. But he went through a mental list of all the piano players that he knew and that he'd worked with. And he told me about their skills, their abilities, and the fact that they could do anything that we wanted them to do, and they had the equipment that we required. But as each name came up, he attached to each one a caveat. Something that stopped him from giving them the fullness of his recommendation. Then he uttered the immortal words. Who we need is someone like Greg. Because Greg is undeniable. Toastmasters and most welcome guests, are you undeniable in what you do? My challenge to you is to galvanize you to become undeniable in the things that you do by learning from the three things we're going to talk about in this speech that will make you into an undeniable person. But firstly, what does it mean? What did my friend mean by using that word in the context? Well, he is a producer of music. He records music, he mixes music, he masters music. And in his philosophy is that he does not want his music or the music he's worked on, he does not want it to be any barrier to that going out into the world. It must be suitable for radio. It must be suitable for TV, for film, for whatever. He wants every aspect of that to be played, mixed, produced at the highest quality so that there is no way that anyone can come back to him and say, this isn't good enough. This is something that, this isn't good enough for our radio station or film, whatever it is. He wants the best equipment, the best musicians, the best conditions. He's very meticulous at all these things. That's what he means by undeniable. And when he applies that to a person, he talked about this friend of ours called Greg. And when we were younger, we played in a band with Greg. And what he was basically saying to me was, Greg had everything. He had it all as a piano player, as a musician, and there was nothing that held him back from fully recommending and trusting Greg and giving everyone a recommendation that he was the man to go to. Unfortunately, Greg was in Los Angeles at the time, so he was no longer available to us. But that is what undeniable really means. It means becoming a person that everyone feels that you are the go-to person. Everyone feels completely comfortable with passing your name on, with suggesting you as the go-to person in what you do. Why would you want to be that? Why is that important? Well, my theory, my idea is that right now, in rooms around the world, could be in Toastmasters clubs, restaurants, offices, living rooms. Your name, your story, your actions are being brought up and evaluated and talked about by people that you might have never even met yet. Influential and interesting people that have life-enhancing experiences to offer, opportunities that they have to offer. They may be looking for someone like you and depending on those conversations and the things that have been brought up, the doors of opportunity may swing open for you or may not. And you might never even know why. And it could all come down to small, simple things. Parts of your behavior, parts of your actions that you've left out or that you've done. 
that have influenced what people have said about you. And I believe that we all have a ripple effect. Every one of our actions, everything we do, every thought we think, every word we say, it's not in isolation. Everything has a ripple effect that passes on through the human society, sometimes across continents, often across generations, and all the way down through time. Your impact is incredibly important and it is important that you are able to manifest the fullness of your potential. That you are able to embrace that. And that that is not prevented from you by being an, being an undeniable person, by having something that holds people back from passing your potential greatness on to others. So we all have a gift. We all like to share that. Well... To become an undeniable person, I would say that there's three things that we should work on. And the first one is our competence in what we do. The second is our conduct towards what we do. And the third is our attitude in what we do. Firstly, our competence. I believe that everyone should commit to mastery of what you do, whether that is in your work, in your hobbies, on your Toastmasters journey. I believe you should commit to mastery. Some say it takes 10,000 hours to master something. Others say we should fake it till we make it. <laughs> Why don't we just make it? We've got all the information out there. We've got all the teachers out there. And if we want to see a model of mastery, we can look to Toastmasters in our journey. We take a skill that we're looking to develop, we break it down into the different facets of that skill. And then we start working on those different skills. We get feedback from people that have already been in that journey. And we continue that process over and over. And we gradually gain mastery. It is worth doing because we become an undeniable person. The second is our competence in what we do. No, sorry. The second is our conduct. And a, a good example of conduct came when my friend brought up one of these piano players he was talking about. Why did he not recommend this person? Well, what he said happened is that his wife had been a professional musician, and she had a following in Sweden, of all places, and they'd hired this piano player to play in a concert with her in Sweden. It was a launch gig for her new album, and it had been a successful event, and there was lots of people there. And after the concert, there was a line of people waiting to buy her album and meet her and sign and get her to sign the album. And this man, that had been the piano player, saw this as a fantastic opportunity for him to get his CDs out and start trying to sell these to the crowd. Now, everything else he'd done was perfect. His, his playing, his ability with the piano and everything had been perfect, but his conduct on the night was incorrect. It was the wrong thing to do. And that stopped my friend from ever recommending him again. Just a small thing, but he wasn't comfortable with that action. I think we need to be wary that we do things within the, within the appropriate parameters of what we're doing. We can all be iconoclasts and rebels and try and do things different ways, but we should make sure that our conduct does not hold us back from opportunity. And lastly, our attitude. And it is our attitude that will really affect everything. Greg had a can-do attitude, the piano player I was talking about. He always said yes to things. He always could do things. He never bowed down from a challenge. He always tried to do more. He had a fantastic attitude and people wanted to be around him. And if you develop your attitude, People will want to be around you. The great motivational speaker Jim Rohn says that we don't get become successful by pursuing success. We become successful by attracting success. We attract success by becoming attractive people. We develop our attractiveness as a person in what we do through mastering the competence of what we do through having the appropriate conduct for all the situations that we're in. 
and we're developing a fantastic attitude towards what we do. If we do all these things, we, be, we become a truly undeniable person. And if you do that, then the doors of opportunity will always swing open to you. And you'll be able to walk through them to live the life, the lifestyle of your dreams. Toastmasters.